Hello and welcome to SBS 101 Introduction to Anthropology and I'm Juan Jose Gutierrez and I'm here to talk about Chapter 5. If you are not a biology major, brace yourselves because this is going to be a little bit complicated. Um, well, not that much. It's just that uh, we need to talk about evolution and I want to confront you today with uh, very important ideas about uh, evolution and and biology and genetics and uh, the basic uh, fundamental traits of uh, evolutionary thinking. Uh, you might want to ask why is it that we're paying so much attention to genetics and evolution uh, in an intro to anthropology but I want to remind you that anthropology whether it is cultural, physical or any other type of anthropology it's uh, based on a number of pillars, one of which is, is understanding human beings as a complex product of evolution. And without understanding the workings of evolution on the one hand and second, the long-standing history of uh, humans in the planet and where we come from, it is difficult to understand how we act and, and how we live today. Um, so a, anyone doing any kind of anthropological work needs to have present these principles and understand that we come from from certain elements and that are out there and one of which is evolution and evolution has been as you probably know controversial it is today controversial for a number of reasons and and I, I would like to explore with you where is the origin of this controversy and and uh, you need to face uh, the, the um, the problems that come with understanding evolution particularly when and if you are a religious person so it, it really means that you need to think through and see if there's necessarily a contradiction between your beliefs and and what science is telling us and, and how to address that but one thing I have to tell you I'm not here to preach to any specific creed or set of ideas but as a scientist I am obligated to um, confront you with the basic uh, tenets of, of social science and one of which is understanding humans as the, the product of evol evolution not as a um, creation in the biblical sense um, and again it's not that there's a fundamental um, uh, uh, negation of religion if you're a, if you're a scientist you can find many scientists that are uh, believers as well but on the other hand scientists have the uh, obligation to explain things by causes and sometimes causes takes us away from plain religious uh, beliefs so um, again brace yourselves and let's explore these issues and think of this chapter as a chapter that is going to ask you to think critically about these elements and um, not to ask you to leave behind your beliefs or anything, but definitely um, think about um, the potential contradictions and, and how to best uh, solve them if you haven't done that before. But, um, but again, evolution is, is critically important for anthropology as a science. Evolution and genetics. So, big question, if you haven't thought of it, if you haven't read much, it is time for you to go back to it and, and ask question what is evolution and how does evolution occur um, and its basics evolution it comes from um, evil which means epoch and uh, and change through time that is evolution is this sense that everything that surrounds us including ourselves have uh, been in a different shape or fashion in, in times past and then we come from a long-standing tree of, um, of different forms of life some directly related to us and some others not directly related to us but eventually all of it comes from a s same basic um, fundamental origin so that's what we understand for evolution um, now evolution is based on the idea that we inherit traits from others and uh, so how does heredity works and how is heredity studied so we're going to explore that a little bit and then what are the forces that contribute to genetic evolution why do living organisms change if they do 
and uh, what are the advantages and of these advantages of this change and, and what, uh, what explains this uh, change. All right. One of the things that um, uh, anthropology explains is that humans have a very unique and specific way of being adapted to the environment they live in. And it's unique because, because it is not only biological, but it is also cultural. And it is a combination of these biological traits and cultural traits that makes uh, the human experience so complex and so rich. Um, most animals would mostly adapt biologically to the environment, but now, if you look at humans, humans actually change uh, the environment so they can live in that environment. And that's thanks to culture, thanks to the ability to explain, uh, consider, uh, to have forethought, to have a sense of what's coming, and all of that is because we have an amazing symbolic capacity, which will be a, a main topic in this class throughout the semester. Um, the one thing that uh, generated our understanding of biology was that many scholars in the 18th century became just fascinated with the amazing uh, uh, biological diversity of the planet. This is the 18th century is, is the year, the century in which the planet becomes a single unit, so to speak, because of traveling and because of uh, new inventions. And so all of a sudden the planet is closer and, and we realize that the diversity of the planet is just quite frankly amazing. So why is it do so diverse and what explains that? So I have placed in this presentation multiple clips that I have selected from different sources. Uh, some are uh, from universities, some others are from just the professional sites that I found interesting and illuminating. So I won't play them more in this presentation, but I want you to take the time to come back to this, uh, to this slideshow for, for Chapter 5, which is posted on iLearn, so that you can actually watch these clips on its entirety. It's really worth watching them. So let me get started with this short clip. Different animals have different body structures and behaviors that help them to survive in I'm going to let just one go. Alright, so this is a, 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 a nice clip from a student who's, who's being presented and exploring different adaptations of animals. So this is exactly what uh, explorers in the eight, 18th century, mostly from Europe, were discovering, that the animals were extremely well suited for the envir environment they were living in, and they were, um, by, by uh, uh, analyzing these animals and, and learn from the locals, they would learn all the amazing things animals could do uh, to go with the um, uh, with the conditions in which those animals are living. So camel is one example and there's a few more examples in that clip. So animals are actually adapted, marvelously well adapted to their environments. How did, did it happen? Well, the immediate response was what God created the animals in that way precisely so that they can live well in the places they live. But there was a response that was not satisfying to too many scientists and they continue digging in to try to understand more how this, um, this uh, um, adaptation happened. Um, here's the other, uh, so on the one hand we have adaptation. We know that animals and humans are adapted. Second element that is important to consider to start exploring um, um, evolution is that uh, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a very vast and complex system by which certain forms uh, of living uh, beings are close, more closer to other forms than others. For example, plants 
uh, have leaves and so plants look like plants and, and they are different from other animals but animals most animals have certain traits that are um, good across all the animal kingdom so these uh, um, uh, philosophers and, and uh, early scientists started uh, seeing that uh, actually everything seems to be somewhat related and and uh, it was Linnaeus uh, from who was uh, from the 18th century who actually um, uh, started organizing every living being into systems and the systems really show that there was was a basic order in the animal uh, and plant and in the living um, planet that we live in for creationists which is um, those um, who believe that uh, l every single animal and plant was created as such by the divinity they they simply thought that it was the way that creation was planned by a um, a, a an intelligent designer uh, which was God uh, and that was for the most part uh, accepted for many many centuries particularly in Europe In this clip that I'm gonna let you explore on your own, um, there's students from a university that are being taught uh, the principles of evolution. But uh, what's interesting with this school is that this is a, a Christian school, and uh, as uh, deeply um, religious as they are, they they um, some of them would see and read the Bible as um, uh, literally. Uh, and, and then it becomes problematic to try to understand information that is at odds with what's in the Bible. So Whitton College has, has done an effort, and this clip is about that effort, to try to explain how those two realms uh, actually can, can be understood as, as, if not compatible, at least two different ways to approach um, uh, understanding what's around us. But um, but there has to be um, a, um, a critical approach to things and, and that's something that if again if you haven't done much of it I think these clips that I have posted here and the reading of the chapter will expect that you start thinking about uh, these uh, deep issues of understanding where we come from, what is evolution, how evolution works the time span that it's needed for evolution to work which is uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of years and how is or can that be compatible with religious beliefs but uh, but as uh, any scientist would tell you we need to differentiate these two fields and science can only rely on facts and, and information that it's in the ground and then and, and you focus on that so take a look at this clip and see how these students and this college is dealing with understanding these basic uh, tenets and, and traits uh, let's move on and, and explain uh, and talk a little bit about um, theory and fact when, when we say that evolution is a theory what it is meant by that is not to say that evolution is a way of explaining it a theory is, is complicated because a theory is a set of, of um, uh, of elements of, of uh, understandings that have been proven uh, in experimentally in a way that it's uh, it, it cannot be falsified in a way that it um, it it is uh, proven again and again and it, it stands the test and that is a science and, and by accumulating those elements those ideas that are being proven then you can actually put together a theory so it's not just a speculation but it's something that it's based on on um, on facts and on proven uh, understandings 
uh, that's the the arena in which Darwin is moving and uh, I have um, a clip in this uh, slide that actually talks a little bit about Darwin and you need to know that that uh, Darwin spent many many years from the moment in which he uh, completed his conceptualization as to how evolution worked and his theory of evolution he spent well over 20 years agonizing trying to understand whether or not this was something that would be understood and well received in uh, in the religious context of it of his time so it was quite quite a, quite a trip for Darwin to try to publish his book he only published his book the uh, origin of the species uh, once he knew that there was another scientist who had actually reached to the same conclusions that he had and uh, so it was important for him to to let people know that he had been uh, working at it for many many years and he had already a, a theory that was com um, su substantive in terms of explaining how species transform through time and how the entire life of the planet can be explained so here's the clip and I will let you uh, explore it That's the simplest definition of who Darwin is, but uh, again, I will let you uh, play with it. All right. Um, so Darwin didn't come to his understanding of evolution and his theory of evolution out of the blue. There were already many elements out there at play, but what was needed was someone who would synthesize all that knowledge that was already there. None other than his own grandfather. Erasmus Darwin um, uh, was the person who already pro uh, proclaimed that uh, we had a common ancestry with all animal species. So uh, the idea was out there, but his magic was to actually uh, explain it uh, in a very systematic way, not only as a generalized idea, but already as a theory. And once again, theory understood not as this speculation but as a set of ideas formulated to explain something and that ha it ideas that have been tested again and again um, I have two clips down here that I'm not going to play uh, uh, but I want to explain to you that these two clips are actually interesting because they uh, show people that are troubled with the idea of um, of evolution and I want you to uh, because the chapter that you're reading for this uh, for this lesson, chapter five, is exp <coughs> explaining to you what is evolution. I also want you to see how people uh, challenge these ideas, and I want you to critically approach these two um, ways of uh, seeing things and trying to see where you stand right now and and to what extent uh, the understanding of evolution that anthropology is supporting is one that you have given much thought in the past. So. Again, I, I, uh, these are two clips that I recommend for you to scan uh, as soon as you're done uh, listening to my uh, presentation. All right, let me move right along. So, uh, for a definition of uh, natural selection, it is the process by which nature selects the forms most suited to survive and pr reproduce in a given environment. Uh, this is a little bit complicated definition in which it gives nature a sense of agency so what is nature is this uh, a way to replace God no in reality what uh, what what this means is that every living organism has in itself a mechanism that triggers the um, progressive uh, permanence of um, adaptations to the environment. Um, those organisms who have happen to have certain traits when the environment changes uh, and those traits are happen to be advantageous in that changed environment, those are the ones that are going to remain whereas other animals or, or organisms that didn't have those traits will have a harder time uh, remaining in that place till eventually they fade away. And it's just by, by um, by uh, chance, 
that uh, those who happened to have the best elements in the changing environment those are the ones that uh, that remain and that's kind of the basic principle of adaptation so there's no need for for a for a pre-design of someone thinking oh, what does a camel needs to be able to withstand the rigor of the desert and then you create that animal but uh, no, you have an animal who happens to have nostrils that are more flexible than others. So those that have nostrils that are more flexible will get less sand in there and hence will be able to uh, walk more and to get to the water hole. Those who didn't uh, would die in the, uh, trying to get to the water hole. And so those who didn't die are the ones that are having more offspring and the offspring is more likely to have that trait that... Um, that is uh, in, uh, in this example that I'm giving you the nostrils. So uh, adaptation is just surviving. Uh, it's not being uh, stronger or weaker. It's just simply being happened to be in the right place, uh, place at the right moment, and hence being able to survive and pass on your 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 genes and your traits to the next generation. So adaptation and survival of the fittest is not always a this idea that only the strongest will survive. In reality, it's not the strongest, but it is the one that is best adapted. So a cockroach will be able to withstand an atomic blast, and they might survive human species. We don't know. But see, I, I really think of myself as something better than a cockroach, you know. Uh, but uh, in, 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 in the event of a nuclear uh, winter, um, maybe the cockroach will be here and I will not. So uh, that animal, in that sense, will be the, the fittest and the strongest, not the human. So that is the idea with evolution. It is the best is the one that happens to have the traits that are best adapted to the environment in a given uh, moment. Now, so Darwin knows that, that animals have changed through time, and they know that we pass on to the next generation traits and that those traits that remain are, are the ones that are more efficient in, in any given context. What he didn't know is what was this specific mechanism. And the mechanism was something that a, a uh, humble monk in the in today Czech Republic discovered, which is uh, the Mendelian genetics. Mendel actually explained and discovered the mechanism, the specific mechanism in every living organism that actually explains the transmission of traits actually he 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 learned where those uh traits were stored as information and passed on to the next generation and um he basically discovered uh what we call and we know today as genetics um he actually I was working and at the time in which Darwin was writing and was exploring his ideas of evolution and funny thing is and I have a little clip that explains the story and and I'd like you to for you to see this on its entirety he actually um, wrote a letter to Darwin telling him this is this is how you explain the transmission of of uh, uh, traits from one generation to the next and Darwin was never um, it, it didn't pay attention to it. It uh, I actually never read the letter, and it would have been great because he would have really completed his his uh, understanding of evolution. But the good news is that while Darwin didn't know uh, how uh, uh, genes work, we do know because Mendel was able to uh, pass on his uh, understanding to a next generation of of scientists. Evolution and evolutionary theory is far removed from what um, um, Darwin uh, explained. Darwin, Darwinian theory is just the, the first step. We're, we're way past that. And the reason why we're way past that is because now we know m many more things that Darwin wasn't able to know. But the magic of Darwin is that he was able to explain the initial and important understanding that life has in and of it in in itself the ability and the mechanism to uh, transform itself and, and adapt and and move on um, and take different forms. So here's a short clip explaining uh, Mendelian um, experiments, which 
I think you're gonna find interesting so don't forget to take a look at that uh, clip um, so um, I think I'm not gonna dwell on details um, because this this chapter actually gives you quite a quite a bit of details on on uh, genetics and how that works and I really need you to take a look at the clips that I have posted and 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 spend some time with your reading on on chapter five but uh, if you ask me in a nutshell what is the importance of this uh, of this chapter is to first understand that evolution is a pillar for any kind of anthropology today that evolution was first uh, proposed and articulated by Darwin um, based on, on knowledge that was already present in the, eight, in the um, 18th, 19th century and that it is basically explaining how life transforms itself through time and, and also um, it's important for you to recap some of your understandings, basic understandings of, of uh, genetics uh, some of the materials that I have for you posted on iLearn will, will just give you the recap that you need to remember those lessons of biology in, uh, in your prior life in uh, high school or in your initial uh, year at the university. Um, why is this such an important thing for anthropology? Well, we're going to move into understanding where humans come from and how we have developed a number of things. Why do we walk upright and not in four limbs? Why do we have big heads and, and an Im immense uh, symbolic ability? Why do we have opposing thumbs in our hands and we can grasp, grasp things and manipulate things and many other things? Uh, how, uh, how we came to be what we are? Well, you cannot understand that uh, without having this basic understanding of um, natural selection, evolution, and certainly genetics. So, um, uh, enjoy the reading, uh, give it some time because this is a chapter that requires uh, your attention but um, I, I, I hope you, you will enjoy the reading and I hope it will help you kind of remember these basic uh, understandings that I know you have already um, explored in the past and again give it a thought uh, and, and a critical approach to to what extent one person can be religious and and scientific at the same time and whether or not you can uh, you can trust evolution as a theory, not just as a sort of a uh, an invention from scientists. I don't know for what purpose, but uh, that, or maybe just to discredit religion. I think we're way past that. But uh, this is a moment in your life in which it is important to give it to give it a thought and and consideration. All right, so. Um, uh, my utmost uh, respect to those of you that are deeply religious um, I, I think it's quite important uh, but on the other hand it's very important that you explore uh, evolution and, and give consideration to uh, how complicated it is and sometimes how difficult it is to, to make it work with certain views and, and uh, understandings of religious nature uh, I'll see you in the forum because we're going to have hopefully a lively discussion. Thanks so much.